All right, Shalom Akim. <clears throat> I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash. Double honors goes into the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that have taught me the truth. And much love and peace, blessings goes out to all you hopeful elect brothers that are teaching the word of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. So, uh, this is going to be a lesson. I'm entitled the, to rule with the rod of iron. Because basically you had this guy Vocab alone recently coming out making scoffing statements towards the rulership that the Israelites are going to have. The rulership that what's modern, who are modernly known as blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, because those aren't ancient names. We're, we're modernly known as that. He's scoffing at the concept which is found in the Bible of us ruling over the heathen perpetually. Okay, and he makes statements like he's going to serve Jesus Christ in, in this and that. But little does he know or little does he believe, which it doesn't matter if he believes or not, that Yahweh Hashem Shai is going to rule over him with rigor. It's not going to be, a, a <clears throat> you're not going to be like the, the butler off the Fresh Prince, you know, where they hit, <laughs> we have a friendly relationship with uh you know how Will Smith had with the butler and everything? Ain't going to be like that, man. You're going to be getting bashed over your head when you do things that are wicked, when you go outside of the rulership. And we're going to make you work until you, you know, make you work until you meet your measure. Until you actually starving and, uh, and worn out, exhausted, so to speak. Now, you are going to be fed. And all of that, but you are going to be a slave, man. And that, that is the judgment of all the heathen nations because that's what they were created for in the first place. They were created to be ruled over by the Israelites. And what comes with rulership comes with the authority to exact punishments on your slaves, on your servants. Because it's not like every one of our servants is going to do exactly what we want. Some of them are going to be rebellious. Some of them are going to get out of line, and that's when that, that rod of iron is going to have to come out. Okay? So, that being said, let's go into a few scriptures. This is Revelation 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And let's, look, let's get the understanding from this by going into the Greek. Because this child is actually Yahweh Shai. And that word for nations is ethnos. Which means a race, a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish, usually. And when it says non-Jewish, you got to understand that means non-Israelite. A Gentile, heathen, nation, people. Now, we know in certain contexts, this actually can apply to Israelite foreigners. The Gentiles, which <coughs> actually forgot their heritage. But in this case, it's speaking of heathens being ruled because this is the object of the rule right the heathen but it says with a rod of iron so why is this rule being prescribed why is it described as being with a rod of iron it's because the type of punishments that's going to be acceptable by put of putting on the people okay with that rod of iron is uh the rod is the greek word rabdos Matter of fact, let's go back. Because we're going to look up these words in the Greek to get understanding. The word in for rod is rabdos. And it means uh, a staff. When applied to kings, it says with a rod of iron indicates the severest, most rigorous rule. Now, let's look up a word for rigor. Rigorist or rigorous, extremely thorough, exhaustive, accurate, <clears throat> strictly applied or adhered to. Meaning, if you go outside of what we say, there's gonna be severe punishments ha happening behind it. It's not gonna be a lackadaisical, everybody do what they want type of rulership. It's going to be strict. We're going to be giving our orders and we're going to tell you what to do and when to do it. And when you go outside of that, that's when Yahweh Shimei is going to put the hammer down on your ass. 
You're going to get waxed up. Okay, so let's read it again. Read that preset, Revelation 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And that's how we know that that child is talking about Yahweh Shai. Because if you will understand the scriptures, you understand the gospels. When you read in the gospels, it mentions how Yahweh Shai <clears throat> was crucified and then called up to the throne of the heavenly father. So that's how he got that authority of this rulership to be able to do this. And see, and this is something that, you know, Christianity doesn't really teach you. Christianity does not teach this doctrine for the mere fact that they think that uh, who they call Christ is a, is a good guy. He's, 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 not, he's a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he doesn't have any venge, venge, vengefulness or vendetta in his heart. Towards those that have done wrong to him. No. Or his people for that matter. No. For the, those that have wronged. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his people. This is why the punishment. <clears throat> is going to be perpetually for a thousand years. <clears throat> because for a whole. Millennia. In a lifetime. A whole millennia in a lifetime. You got to wait. A whole millennia in a lifetime. 500 plus years in all of our different captivities that we served in the heathen have done wrong unto our people and the scriptures tell you that a false balance is abomination to the Lord so he, he, the way the Lord is going to balance this out is by this rigorous rulership which is going to be placed on the heathen in the kingdom of the Israelites which Yahweh Shai who they call Jesus Christ is going to be the, the top king of that kingdom so uh, this is Revelation 19 and matter of fact, let's go to Psalm 110 and two. It says the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. And who's the rod of our strength is Yahweh Shai. Because <clears throat> remember, he is being mentioned as ruling with the rod and that word for rod here is in the hebrew is mata it says a branch a tribe also a rod whether for chastising ruling throwing or walking so the chastisement and rulership that's what the lord is bringing that type of rod it says rule thou in the midst of thine enemies so notice this that yahweh shai is not just going to be ruling in the midst of his friends and how the fuck, how do you treat an enemy? You treat him severely. You bust him over the head. Okay? And that's what's going to happen. They're going to get whipped. They're going to get lashed. These are actually punishments that are prescribed in the scriptures of us actually whipping and putting to death heathen nations. How, what do you think is going to happen in our kingdom when we find two homosexuals trying to commit a filthy act, man? They're going to get put to death. And that's part of that harsh, rigorous, severe rule. So this is what King David and our people have prophesied of. That's what we're hoping for. That's why it says the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, he's going to send you Shai to perform this rulership. Okay. So let's go. To the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. Matter of fact, no. No, 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 no. Let's go to uh, 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And this is talking about who the world calls Jesus Christ. What John was detailing is he's seen the Lord come back. He's seen the actual prophecy take place before it happened in real life. Because this is what is to come. It says his eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. 
and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word, the word of the Most High. So Yahweh Shai, upon his arrival, he's deep, he's described as having a vesture dipped in blood. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of killing done by his hands. The blood was upon him because he's responsible for the bloodshed. This is not this nice, uh, aloof, nice guy, God that, that is, that is, uh, talked about in the Christian church. Yahweh Shai is a vengeful spirit. He's a vengeful warrior king. And that's what he's coming to do, to shed blood. And that is part of that rigorous rule. That is part of that, uh, you know, the rulership and, and how the heathen are going to serve. They're going to get broken down. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he, he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. And that's what is talked about the Yahweh Shah. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. Once again, that rulership is that rod of iron is a rulership that includes punishments. Okay. Because this is, it says it here in Leviticus 25. <clears throat> And 45, moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, and that represents heathens, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. You see? So that means that heathens, they, they, that is their, that is, that is our birthright to have you as, as an inheritance forever. <clears throat> so that word for bondmen is ibad, and it means to keep in bondage, <clears throat> to be a bondman, bond servants, bond service, to compel, to do. <clears throat> And what are we going to be compelling them to do? To oversee, oversee our flocks, to build our houses, to build our infrastructure, to farm our land. That's what they're going to be doing. Okay? So, let's go back and read it. It says, They shall be your bondmen forever, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, meaning Israel is a distinct class. It's making a distinguishing mark. You shall not rule one over another with rigor, meaning we can't be oppressive to other Israelites. Even though we will have other Israelite servants, you can't oppress them. They have to get paid. They have to be fed on all these different things. You can't, can't smite, uh, smite them. But when it comes to the heathen, you could do all of that. And that word for rigor is, is uh, <clears throat> parak. And it means to break apart, to fracture. <laughs> Meaning that we can't do this to Israelites, but we can do it to heathens. Do you see what I mean? That's what's going to be happening to these motherfuckers, man. And that's exactly what we wish, man. We don't wish anything else but to rule over you heathens and fuck you up. This is Psalm 149 and verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. As a matter of fact, let's go up. Let's go to verse 6. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth. And who? The saints' mouth, the Israelites' mouth. Because what, what are we praising for? We're giving thanks to the Lord for letting us do what is, what is uh, said here. And a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen. And punishments upon the people. So we're going to be punishing them, man, for their infractions. And the punishments is uh, the walk. The waha. And uh, the waha means. Uh, 
rebuke, correction, reproof, argument, impeachment, reproof, chiding, rebuke, rebuke. They're going to be getting rebuked. They're going to be getting cursed out. Harshly, man. Just like, hey, you tell them like, hey, motherfucker, you didn't have this done this at this time when I told you. Oh, it's punishment time. That's how we're going to be treating them. Exactly how we exactly how I mentioned it. We bringing these scriptures to life. OK, and this is exactly what Vocab Malone is trying to fight against. But guess what? At the end all beyond, if he is a heathen, he will be part of this. He will be the subject of this rigorous rule. He's going to get fucked up. All praise goes to Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, Shalom.